And so the Holy Spirit going to bring all of the opportunities that you need to mingle both the wisdom and the wine together. Let's go to verse two. She mingles her wine and she has also furnished her table. Now, furnishing her table is really important because this means that a place of readiness for God's food, God to feed you, the daily bread. Look, she's creating an atmosphere for the daily bread. Now, this this she is not no just no woman or no female. This dealing with the body of Christ as a whole, every single friend of God. Is your table furnished? Because your table has to be in a place of preparation so God can serve the food to you. So the table has a lot to do. If you take the tea out of table, you'll get the word able. So really your table is an ability that God has given to you and God will reveal to you when you're focused. The table, if you take the tea out of table, you get the word able. It's an ability from God furnishing her abilities. Meaning, clearing out all of the clutter so that the, the Lord, the Lord strong and mighty, the king of glory can come forth for what he wants. Now, if you don't furnish your table, you'll never receive the table that God has prepared for you in the presence of your enemy. Verse three, she has sent forth her handmaidens. Now, these are the ministering spirits. And this is very important. There's a degree of wisdom where God going to show you how to send forth ministering spirits to minister for you with a situation that's bringing you stress. These matings are being sent forth because of the voice of his word. Psalm, I want to say 103 verse 20 or somewhere around there. Stay focused, stay focused. We, we, don't, we don't need to search no scripture. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Now, saints, this, this is how you must understand wisdom. Why is she crying out in the highest places of the city? Because this is where the wealth of the wicked is. This is where people are buying and selling. They're distracted, they're falling what they want to do in this life. And this is where she plants herself looking who wants to come out from among them and be ye separate that I may call you sons and daughters. Look, she's looking at who's going to come out from amongst the city. Now, she cried out upon the highest places as well because this is where principalities and powers think that they have governed the minds of people for a long period of time. So you see how this wisdom of God is constantly in your proximity so that you won't stay underneath the bondages. See what caused the children of Israel to mourn. It was the spirit of wisdom. They realized that Pharaoh had them in bondage, the spirit of wisdom. What, what, what was happening when Moses came on the scene? That's the spirit of revelation. That was the wine. That was the answer. Now imagine if God put the answer in Moses for the children of Israel, how much more does God put the answer in your man of God and what he's telling you and his presence in your life for the changes that you need to occur and the deliverances you need to happen from every bondage, whether it be mental bondage, emotional bondage, financial bondage, relationship bondage, um, the bondage of anything going on in your workplace. Let's go to verse four. Whosoever is simple, let him turn in hither. 
turn in hither. Now, this is dealing with repentance. Repentance from your own decision making. Realizing that you need to acknowledge God more in all your ways for him to direct your path. Even the path of your mind. Do you know that if you don't acknowledge God mentally, he can't direct your mind into the path where no vain imaginations rule. Your mind is going to be subject to thoughts and imaginations and images and photos that does not come from God because you even have to acknowledge him mentally. You got to acknowledge him emotionally so that you don't become discouraged, so that you don't de become de depressed. Saints, if you want to switch your atmosphere, just switch your focus. You switch your atmosphere to, to, by switching your focus. You switch your focus to switch your mood. You switch your mood to switch your productivity. You switch your productivity to switch your credibility level with God. You switch your credibility level with God to switch your income. If your credibility changes, so does your income. God trusts you more when you give him more. More of your time, more of your money, more of your, in, your, your, in, your interest, more of your focus, more of your learning, more of your receptivity. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 4. Whosoever is simple, let him turn in hither. Now, simple means foolish. Whosoever is dumb, stupid. Whoever is tired of making decisions that ain't bringing you closer to God. Yeah, you said what you wanted to say. You did what you wanted to do. But are you closer to God? Dumb, da dumb, 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 dumb. Dumb, da dumb, 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 dumb. Dum da dum 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 da dum 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 dum. How does it feel for you to feel so dum da dum 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 da dum dum dum. How does it feel for you to feel so dum? Got Prince in the back with high heels on. Doom do 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 do. Saints, you ever wonder how them groups whose song be sounding funny be selling millions of records? That's sure that people like being crackheads and stuff. And I, right, what's wrong with you? That song don't sound right. The song be winning about Grammy after Grammy or whatever. I don't care. Screw it. Yeah, you gave a piece of your mind. But... You giving a piece of your mind, did it move God to now give you a piece of his mind so that you got the mind of Christ? If it didn't, what was the point? See, the wiser you become, you start realizing, well, how is this giving me favor to God? How is this bringing me closer to God that, I'm, that I said this, I done this, I connect with this? What, 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 how is it bringing me closer to God? Whosoever is simple, that means that you realize that is it? The simplicity that you need Jesus, you need the Holy Spirit, you need prophetic instructions, you need direction because your emotions, your mind, your decisions, your knowledge, your information, it can bring you into a place you don't want to be. Now, look what happened here. It says, whosoever is simple, let him turn into hither um, and ask for him that wanteth understanding. As for him that wanteth understanding, as to him. So your want is a glue for understanding, for clarity. As for him that wanteth understanding. Saints, you got to want understanding. You got to want favor. The more favor you want, the more discipline you damage the more disciplined uh, you decide to be, the more favor you want. Because discipline is the management of your decision making so that it can cause favor. Think about that. If you want favor, you're going to do different things so that the favor can find you. Favor is located in unselfishness. You take a note, write it down. Favor is located in unselfishness. If you want to find the favor of God, you don't find it just through prayer, 
but you can find it if you're disciplining yourself to pray. And that might go over your head a little bit. You got to think about what I just said there. It's not so much the favor, but it's the discipline that's being exercised in praying. See, how many of you all know that it's not just sowing a seed that releases favor, but it's the, it's the level of discipline that it took you to sow that seed. Are you seeing this? Because you could give one dollar and say, I sold. Lucifer didn't even sow one dollar in hell. <laughs> Lucifer be robbing people, be going to the Jesus, Jesus, you want? I got, I got, I got, I got, uh, I, I took five dollars, Jesus. I took five dollars to one of your saints that don't want to believe in you for the seed. <laughs> I took five dollars from the saints. You gave five dollars. I give, okay, I gave you four dollars and 59 cents. I need one more cent because I got, you know, as a matter of fact, I need two cents because I'm about to put my two cent into somebody that belonged to you and they're not even going to see it. <laughs> ah, that's why I get $4.50. Oh, oh, listen, I ain't do nothing. Let me finish. He called me up here. I ain't do nothing. Angel John, John hit him with the gavel. Oh, I ain't even do nothing. What? He called me up here. He told me to come. I ain't do nothing. Proverbs chapter four, verse uh, Proverbs chapter nine, verse four says, "And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him." See, when you want understanding, you you activate a conversation of the wisdom of God with the wisdom of God. You see this when you want understanding, you activate a conversation. With the wisdom of God. If you don't want understanding, God not going to talk to you in the area of wisdom. He going to let you be stupid. He going to let you do what you feel is right. And he going to let you follow your own way. And it may take you years to realize, what did I do? I, I didn't do nothing that produced what God wanted me to have. So deception is Satan letting you, dis, uh, Satan stirring you to despise wisdom. Oh my gosh, did you just hear what I just said? If you think about it like that from now on, even yourself will start realizing intimate places with God where you may be ignoring him and you're in deception. You're not in the deception that make you utterly just say, oh, forget God. You're in the deception that make you lukewarm. See, lukewarm people don't say forget God. Lukewarm people just say, I love God. I care about God. But lukewarm people don't even know the routine, the regimen, the decision making, the conduct, the actions, the productivity, the fruitfulness, the thought life, the word system that's required you to operate if you love him. So You got to want understanding to activate prophetic wisdom. You got to want understanding to activate prophetic wisdom. You're going to have to want favor. See, saints, the more favor you want, the more self-control you choose. The more favor you want, the more inspiration you operate in. The more favor you want, the more discretion guides you into what is necessary for your knowledge and what is unnecessary for your knowledge. I was putting Zendaya glory homes to sleep. I don't got to do much to put her sleep. Anyhow, just my presence alone. She always go to sleep in my presence. She always comfy around me. So I carry this presence, right? Mentally, I studied something. If I put Zendaya to go to sleep and the room is dark, she sleeps better. If I have on light, she may wake up. If I have on uh, a dim light, she may wake up. If I have on darkness, she sleeps perfectly. Here's wisdom. That this is why darkness is needed in your life. Because there's some things that God wants you to remain in the dark about. Because as long as you don't know about it, you're going to sleep. You're going to rest perfectly with God. The more you search for knowledge, the more stress you create for yourself. 
Even the pursuit of knowledges that God don't want you to have actually create an emotional catastrophe. It destroys the momentum that God has given you in 24 hours. Even the search. I remember one time in my life that God had said something to me. And, and somebody had said to me, look for it on Internet. And just the thought of me thinking about looking for it on the Internet drained me. Just the thought. Not even actually doing it. The fact that my mind began to think about searching for something that God already gave me the answer for. I felt the weight of weariness in just the thought. How much more that faith begins to quicken you to stick with God's report. The abundance of curiosity is the master of all your weaknesses. I said the abundance of curiosity is the master of all of your weaknesses. All of your weaknesses can be connected back to a curiosity of being curious, of being nosy, of being someone that searches out beyond your navigational system. God not telling you to pit every address in your GPS. There is a destination that you're supposed to get to. If you stop at five destinations before you get to the destination that was ordained for your GPS, you'll arrive there late. And tardy is a revelation of distractions. Tardy is a revelation of distractions. It means that there's other destinations that you pursued before the actual destination that was supposed to be pursued. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit wants you to stick with the actual address. If you look at the word address, it's like you're adding address to your garment. You're adding address to your appearance. The way that God protects you in the spirit is through garments. So the fact that God will give you a destination, it is an address because you're adding address Onto your life that's going to keep you from an attack in your mind, attacking your body, attacking your spirit, attacking your relationship, attacking your children. You're guarding yourself with the dress. Add dress. You got to add on a dress. And you say, Well, prophet, I'm a man. Why would I put on a dress? I don't want to be Caitlin. We're not talking about Caitlin. We dealing with the fact that you are the body of Christ, the bride of Jesus. And no bride goes to a wedding without a dress. Think about it. Address. Verse 4, chapter 9 of Proverbs. Verse 5. It says, come and eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Look at this. Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine. This is the foods of God. All of these foods carry every money transaction, every money cometh miracle, every money cometh provision, every supernatural wealth transfer, every supernatural increase, all of your financial income, all of your financial raises is in this. Eating of the bread of Jesus Christ, which is Jesus himself, which is what Jesus, Jesus teaches, which is the anointing that teaches you all things. And that's first John two twenty seven. All of this is dealing with the bread. Jesus said, when you break up the bread, do this in remembrance of me. So imagine that the bread is the communion, which is the communication with the anointing that's on Jesus. So you communicate with Jesus's mantle when you receive what Jesus is teaching you in 24 hours. Every hour, God is teaching you something different. The inspired are people that locate what God is teaching in a moment. When you locate what God is teaching in a moment, you wear the mantle that God wants you to wear forever. See, a moment of impartation can produce a lifetime of domination. Verse 5, chapter 9. Eat of my bread Drink of the wine. Drink of the wine. 
Let me say this to you, that some people will never become drunk in what it takes for them to fulfill their assignment. I knew of strippers. I've never been to a strip club. I've ne I will never go to a strip club. That's not my interest. But I knew of strippers before that would get high and drunk before they went go strip. Because they consciously wanted to be in the fullness of what it took for them to be wild. They did drugs before they got on stage because they didn't want to feel any conviction while they was doing it. They did not want to feel like they were doing something wrong to destroy anyone. So they took substance so that their mentality can be at the height of performance so that they could do it to the highest esteem. The same way drinking of the wine is a place where the spirit of God can get you into the mold mentally where you can do what he wants you to do without feeling ashamed, without pulling back, without interjecting your own opinion or trying to interject your own tradition or try to tell God how to tweak it or do it better than how he originally is doing it. Drinking of the wine is an intoxication that you learn what is required so that you could perform in your assignment at the maximum so that you can max out. Imagine having the power to lift a hundred pounds and only lifting 10 pounds. The muscles that was hidden in the hundred pounds will never come to you because you have chosen the 10 pounds. And so you're not going to see the growth that you're looking for. Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Become intoxicated. Wine intoxicates you. When God reveals something to you, it creates a persuasion. When God reveals something to you, it, 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 it determines which level of excitement that you begin to operate in. Because revelation, it solves the pain of blindness. <laughs> Satan, how you doing today? I guess you're doing bad because I'm, I'm, be I'm beating. I'm beating the bricks. Proverbs chapter nine, verse five. Do you know what is going to intoxicate you to obey God perfectly? Do you know what's going to intoxicate you to sow bountifully? Do you know what's going to intoxicate you to yield to correction with the right responses? Do you know what's going to intoxicate you to be patient? Do you know what's going to intoxicate you so that you won't even desire temptation? You won't even heed a bad habit. You won't even desire a wrong path. Do you know the intoxication that makes you submissive? The intoxication that makes you faithful. The hungry get God's attention. But the faithful keeps God attention. If a child obeys you once, you they obtain your focus. But if a child obeys you constantly, they keep your focus. Proverbs chapter nine, verse six, forsake the foolish and live, forsake the foolish and live, forsake, forsake the foolish and live. So foolish, foolish people are transferring foolish decisions to you. I want you to think about that. Fools are mentors. Fools are mentors. So a fool will mentor you in their level of thinking that drives away favor. Saints, your mouth is either driving favor to you or driving away favor from you. Something you're saying is making God like you or dislike you. 
God doesn't like people that have loose cannon mouths because their mouth is deciding his interest in blessing them, his interest in favoring them. God likes you by your desire to learn correct words. God likes you by your discovery of divine attitudes. God likes you because of your recovery of faith and hope and love. When you reposition yourself to operate in love and faith and hope, that's how God likes you. God doesn't like you because he created you. I have drawn pictures that I didn't like and I tore the picture up. Creation is not confirmation of liking. Creation is not confirmation of liking. People have made songs in the studio and said, let's not release this songs. Tupac had many songs that he didn't release that was released when he died because Tupac didn't feel like some of those songs was worthy to be on his CD. He created it, but didn't see the... How? He didn't see the value of it. So creation is not confirmation of liking. So just because God created you doesn't mean God like you. <laughs> just because God created you don't mean that he like you. But mercy is God giving you an opportunity to be like. Favor is because you yielded to the opportunity with the right reaction.